you're in a fraternity, so you got to use that. That's one of the biggest platforms that we have. You got to use that because y'all, y'all, y'all big down here. Mm -hmm. I mean, y'all big everywhere. Mm -hmm. You feel me? But ultimately, you're in the predominantly black um, city, and it's it's number black ownership, entrepreneurship, culture, and that's what you are. You own your own platform. Yeah, for sure. I always tell people this: you already at no. You're already at zero, mm -hmm. so the only thing you can do is turn up. You can't go negative. Not for sure. You only can turn up more. You only can meet more people that can help enhance your livelihood or put you in direction of some bigger stuff. Because this platform can be big enough to go on like revolt, mm -hmm. you know, BT. But I got those connections, and that's a phone call away. But you'll never know that unless you have these conversations with people. Facts. You know what I mean? But and I think I just I don't know because like I think I'm. Like I said, man, I go outside, but I'm just outside to work. It ain't like, I ain't really outside to uh, make friends. But if, I, if I'm working and I make friends, I ain't about to shy away from it. Like, I ain't just an yeah. uh, idiot. It's just, <laughs> I'm only going outside when there's events and events that make sense for me. You and know what I'm saying? And you're a natural people person. That's yeah. like what you, you know, even in college, that's how you was. Are you want to take a drink with me, bro? Like, yeah, what, oh, is that? Uh, it's cool. Vodka? Nah, it's not vodka, but uh. and I don't want to tell you because you want to judge it. Oh, yeah, I, I am going to judge it. But yeah, I can, can tell you, looking can at it. Can you give me two cups of your mom, bro, please? Well, we got pop one of these then. Cup, you get a couple. Yeah, open one of these then so I, I mean, can chase it. I, I got some juice for you. I, I got some juice, yeah. No, I don't want juice. I want some old lick. Okay, I mean, whatever. I man. had a long week. I got you. Know you. Know what I mean? We go to Miami you. on Tuesday. I got you. I got you. I want you to taste it and tell me what you That's think. That's what I do. I can do that for you. Because if show. I tell you what it is, you're going to judge. I'm going to tell you after you taste it. No, I, I'm going to do it regardless whether you tell me or not because that's just me. Okay. But uh, but how you been, dog? Like, I mean, I feel like. See, so, we only see each other in our how long we known each other and how long we seen each other. Probably like twice. Twice and maybe like three a, times in a six year span. Yeah, so <laughs> and I was about to say that. So maybe longer than that. I'm low key downplaying it. I think I met you in maybe maybe 2016, maybe Dell State. Dell State. You was doing a show there, right? Yeah. Mm -hmm. That was dope too, man. That's correct, right? Yeah, but I don't know. If it, it probably was 2016. What, what was that? Like six years ago? What's that? I can't. That's still six years ago. Damn, that's crazy. Hey, I had fun at Dell State too, man. How's it been since then? I mean, since that, I mean, life has definitely been refreshing and more flourishing. How, how, how would you um, categorize that moment in, in time in your career? Because it was still kind of early? That was still early. Definitely early. You know what I mean? Um, but yeah, I would say definitely early. What do you remember about that time? Um, I remember uh, the team that I was traveling with at the time. That uh, everything I did at that time was un it was not structured. So that's why I always remember um, that not being the most that wasn't the structured part of my career or my life. It was more so freelancing because you're in this business entertainment. You're constantly growing. Mm -hmm. But the two biggest things is uh we well, got this one open already. Mm, I mean, well, the first one, okay, okay, okay. Oh, you can have some of that too. I was just trying to. Y'all so funny the way y'all y'all accent is from Baltimore. Come on, dog. And it's so crazy because I'm I'm so tapped in with Baltimore so much. Like you gotta pull your own place. Singer, uh, singer, songwriters. I deal with them. You know Montage, right? Yeah, I know Montage. Yeah, That's yeah. my guy. Yeah, he's out in uh, Arizona. He moved. Yeah, he moved to Arizona. He's doing major stuff, man. He write for Blast, write for Chris Brown. What the fuck? Yeah, he's insane. And then That's the hard. other cat that wrote that that produced the single that I'm about to get ready to drop. He from Baltimore too. Who? Uh his name is Pooh. But it's, I forgot, he's like a short, light-skinned, chubby dude. But it's so crazy because I ran into him just this way. I never met him. Mm -hmm. I just had to be. I just got the song right when I was on tour, and I just cut the record like two days ago. But what ended up happening was I met, uh, I'm in Buckhead at, uh, uh, what's the damn spot? Uh, Cheesecake Factory. With okay. The kids and Shorty. And he was like, yo, is your name Nick LaBelle? Everybody keep coming up to me because they, they people either recognize me from shows or they recognize my chain. It's just so much stuff that be happening. But that shit was funny because it was him. I was like, wow, this is a small world. That's crazy. I was just talking about him and then just met him. So you taste it? About to right now. Tell me what you think. Oh, my manners. I'm sorry. What's popping, everybody? Mr. J Hill. Uh, another dope, dope episode. I got um, special guests. As you can see, we just talking. We just vibing. My guy Nick LaBelle was here. Um, originally from Boston. I'm, we y'all talking about Boston? <laughs> I'm originally from Detroit, <laughs> Michigan, yeah. right? Yep, yep, yep. Um, I met I met this guy in Delaware at Dell State. I was hosting a, a step show, and you know they be having like performers go on, and um, he was performing, uh -huh. and I was asking you, how do you categorize that time in your career? Because for me, it looks like you was moving, like you was doing you was you was doing a school thing back then, uh -huh. and to hear you say like that was when it wasn't even like organized. 
Mm-hmm. And I'm like, damn. And that was fresh in your career. So you was telling me about the uh, the story in the back end about it. So yeah. I want to um, finish. Yeah, definitely. Uh, I, I would say it was like in the beginning state. It was probably towards the, I would say the end of the beginning, mm. uh, like the, the transition. When he, um, before it got real. Yeah, but I had a lot of like trials and tribulations I went through even just from 2016 all the way till now, you know what I'm saying, dealing with cases, going to jail, um, having children. Yeah. Cases for what? what yeah, I had got caught up uh, doing some bullshit. Like what? I'm trying to think, I'm trying to think, like, I was fighting it. I had got, this is, this story is so crazy now that I think about what it. What was it? You ain't I'm about to tell you, I'm about, I'm about to tell you. <laughs> but it's so, it's, it's so much to it. It's, 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 it's smooth, actually. Can we shut that door, if you don't mind? Um, I hear the echo, but it's actually, it's a little it, smooth. It's smooth. This right, here. yeah, it's smooth. It's smooth. You like smooth. it? Uh, I got it. Got it growing me. Yeah, I knew it too. I swear. No, I you did it. No, listen. I was about to say, I was about to say rum, but I was like, no, that ain't no damn. This rum. is rum. Yeah, and then because I was like, you ain't know it was. I said gin. vodka at first, but once I knew, once you said it wasn't vodka, and I knew it wasn't tequila, it was only one thing it could be after that, in my opinion. <laughs> but it's all good. You know what I mean? That's all good. Because I started, I ruled it out first. I did the elimination rule. So I started, ain't no vodka. But if he, I told you, you probably been like, I'm not drinking no gin. No, I still would have did it. You would have did it? You ain't got nothing else in this vodka. Oh, man. man. We could have got some is, shit for you. I just don't like dark. I can't do dark. I'll do anything like. You'd be surprised because that shit cool too. And I ain't just saying it. I feel you. These motherfuckers. Everybody coming out with some shit though. Everybody got some shit more. But you know this guy, um, actually. Fuck it. I was doing it. You know this guy actually had, uh, um, he had. Fucking Ducey and he had Ace of Spade. He the one that sold it to uh to Rick Ross. I mean to Jay Z. Yeah. Right. If you could, if you look at it, it's crazy because if you look at it, Some of the, next time you see Ducey bottle and you look at that, you're like, oh shit. Kind of a little it's similar. Yeah, similar. It similar. But yeah, he was getting in trouble. So um even for that Dell State shit, I had uh, caught a case um in two thousand and fifteen. I think the Dell State had to be a couple years. It had to be a year after because I caught my I caught my actual, I did, like, I, I went to jail in 2017. So I know I caught the case in 2016 for sure. And that was, I wasn't moving like that. So it might have been so, 2015, bro. Uh, no, nope, because t- I wasn't moving. I'm trying to tell you, I, like, like I still have, I probably could tell you because I have the photos from that show. Because, only reason I say because, bro, I didn't, like. But I've known you longer. That's what I'm trying to explain to you. Yeah. I've known you longer than that. I thought that was the first time I met you. Nope. Well, it probably was the first time you met me, but we see each other on social media because I was always getting promoted on a lot of the Greek pages at the time. Okay, okay. You know, I'm being Same, who's there? It was like one of them situations. Yeah, I'm yeah, trying yeah. To see if Niggas I don't understand back in, man, when social good. media, when Instagram first got lit. Oh my God, I was one of them dudes. I was hyped. Damn. That's, 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 that's when we talking about going, we trying to get 100 likes. Yeah. No. It's, it's nuts. It's on that level now. Damn, bro. I'll never forget we trying to get 100 likes. I was the first one to get like 400 likes. I was hyped too. Yeah, as you should. Oh man, what now? What social media became? Yeah, and the thing is, I still love social media. I think it's it's dope, and we just got to use it the right way. Or uh-huh. I wouldn't say use it the. It ain't no such thing as using it the right way. But now, you just gotta get what you gotta get out of that joint. You don't think it became like like it can be intimidating? Not at all. Yeah, it, I mean, it that's can. real, man. No, you're right, cause that that's true. It's, like, it's so fucked up how social media is now. Because. Social media is like you see, and granted, we're not supposed to compare ourselves to nobody, but it make it so easy too. Yeah, right. Like everybody is 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 in eyesight view, right? So it's like, man, oh, they got this. Well, I'm not working hard enough, and it's like you know you're I not seen supposed that, to do that. I seen that post. I seen a post similar to something like that when it's talking about how social media make you feel like you're not doing enough, and you're only 21. Nigga, like, 21. Damn, 21, <laughs> like, 21. Like, I ain't had shit either. God damn, you ain't supposed to have nothing. They got But the reality is though, generation is supposed to elevate. Mm. I still feel like it falls on us as the the newer, um, like like the older, you know, crowd. the new older, the crowd. new older. Yeah, I, say, I like that. Yeah, like we the new old kids, goddamn right? it. The new so old school. We like like cause that, and that's my goal now in life. You know, what I'm saying I know we jumping all around, but it's we like good because I'm gonna you, get back to the case. Yeah, I got so you, it's like I got you. Um, my duty now, you know, is to inspire as many younger individuals as possible. And it ain't oh look at me and try to be like me. It's not that. It's the situation of teaching them about financial literacy, teaching them about credit, mm-hmm. teaching them about ownership and entrepreneurship. And you can still work a regular job and still own your own business. Why not? It don't hurt you. But just ch- make sure that while you uh sitting on your dreams to uh, help somebody uplift theirs, make sure you're finding ways to still chase yours. You know what I mean? <laughs> Everybody talks. So it's funny, right? Because I was talking to somebody and they was, uh, they was like, had, they had a problem with um people that had nine to fives. Not a problem, but they just couldn't respect them as much. Whatever. And I'm like, okay. This is funny because I got a nine to five now, but it's my first time ever having a like a career job, a corporate job, like ever. 
And I was just listening to him and I'm like, damn, this is crazy because you have no idea. And I said that because like me, I got a nine to five, but like this is my full time job as well. You get what I'm saying? And mm -hmm. honestly, to keep it a hundred, I do more hit for this than I do for my job. You, you know what I'm saying? More at the other job. I make more at the other job, <laughs> but that's <laughs> yeah. But it's funding this. You get what I'm saying? Like I put so I put way more time into this than anything else. I mean, like, and sometimes it's, 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 it's I know it's frustrating to my lady and my and my and my kid. You get what I'm saying? Because like I said, I put more time into this than anything in my life. You get what I'm saying? So it's like I definitely understand, but I wish people understood the sacrifices that you gotta make. Cause oh, if you yeah. wanna, if you wanna pay, if you wanna live fancy, if you wanna live nice, so you wanna live yeah, a I wanna certain say way. Live fancy. I would just say if you just wanna live a the, like the life that you really desire, it requires M money. Macro. It, it requires sacrifices. Yeah. It requires money. You, uh, love, you gotta get the I'm money. Sorry, <laughs> love ain't gonna pay the bill. Ain't gonna you know pay what for man? shit. And and if you can't, and I tell women this, and I tell men this too, because there are some boss women out there that's getting to it too. So you can't handle, you know, a person that's that's um, that's gonna be busy that you may not that may not be the person for you. If you don't want, if you want either you either want a person that's gonna be out here getting to the bag and making it happen, or you are gonna have a person that's always in your face, gonna irritate your ass. Then you gonna get mad because you're like, why you ain't out Nigga, doing do nothing? Something. You talking about this case, man? What's up, bro? Yeah. So what? What, what did you? So I you just can't fuck the things. Fuck yeah, the things. Yeah. What happened? I, I, um, I had caught a gun case in Michigan mm. in 2016. What's scary about this whole situation is, um, everything that happened in this case, or everything that happened in this situation, was life changing. So I caught the case the day before this showcase that I had. The showcase happened to be in Baltimore. All right. Mm -hmm. This is my first time ever going to Baltimore. That's the one you won, right? That's the one I won. Like over so, yeah. ninety people, something yep, like that. Yeah, yeah, exactly. So, <laughs> what, what? If I would have caught that case and I would have went to jail, I would have missed that show mm. straight up because it was on a, it was on a, it was on a Friday. The showcase is on a Saturday, but the the party, the place that I caught it, I caught it at Michigan State. My bro had threw a party. This is like my right hand man's. He always threw, we all threw parties and stuff in college. So he was throwing one. I was performing there. I caught the case trying to pick up my brother from um from his apartment and. I was speeding on campus. Mm -hmm. So they pulled me out the car. I told them, because at, at that time I had my gun license in Michigan. You can get your, it's, I don't know how the laws in other states, but in Michigan you can get your gun license like this. It's kind of so, like Georgia, I'm assuming. Yeah, exactly like Georgia. So I'm like, all right, cool. I got my gun license, but at the time my license was suspended and I didn't know. It had suspended within like a six day interval because okay. I had just moved back to Michigan from Atlanta and just bought the gun. The gun was brand new in the box in my book bag in the back seat. So when the police pulled me over, I said, yeah, I got my gun, but it's brand new in the box. It's, it, you know, nothing about it. I showed her my gun license. She was cool, but she couldn't pull my information up. So when they finally pulled it up, they said, your gun license is suspended. So we have to confiscate the gun. And, and they didn't take me to jail because they said, I just don't see how, they said, your gun license must have got suspended within, and, and that's fair, you know, and it was, a, it was a fair judgment. They didn't take me to jail, but um, they issued out a warrant like six months later. So I said, what the fuck? So I'm not knowing that the warrant is out. I get pulled over. They take me to jail. Um, I'm fighting the case, but the case is moving fast because it's like, you know, it's a simple situation. It's a CCW violation. Mm. So they just sentenced me to 90 days and, you know, and I was on two years probation. So I had a two year sentence, but it was suspended. Uh, it was like jail time was only spent after the 90 days. So I just did probation. I didn't get in any trouble. You know what I mean? But I also had a pending case in Georgia from um, identity, theft, identity theft and fraud. But I wasn't, I, I was like, I was innocent, but that was held over me. So I ended up moving to Atlanta and I went to jail like every fucking three months because it was always technical issues with it. So I came here originally um, in 2000. Oh, I came here again in 2019. I got put over in March. Literally, every time I get pulled over or I go to jail, it's always for some major shit. I was going on tour with Anne Marie, uh, the Tripolar Tours, Anne Marie and Vito. I get pulled over. So I missed the first two weeks of the tour because they had me locked up for two weeks because they couldn't get the shit situated. So I finally bonded out, got everything situated, um, had court dates, but then pandemic happened. Mm. So right before the pandemic, uh, somebody had broken to my house. I called the police. I'm living in the cab. These motherfuckers say I got a warrant for my arrest again because they said failure to appear in court. I said, what the hell? I never got any Give information. Me a break. Give me a break. Please. This is every year that I'm in Atlanta. Bro. I'm going to jail. So then they finally said, uh, they finally figured out it was a technical issue on the court behalf. So they wasn't supposed to issue me that warrant. So I finally got out. I haven't been to jail since. Um, and I finally beat the goddamn case. Congratulations. Can we man. clap it up for that, man? Clap it up for my guy. God Lord damn, Jesus, bro! You've been through head. a hell of a lot to just. Yeah, to, but you've been working. To be an R&B singer. <laughs> <laughs>
<laughs> but this entire time you've been working though. And Always. Damn, bro. It's damn, bro. We gotta slow down. We gotta relax. Hold up. Hold up. Yeah. Mm. <laughs> he said we got. Because I was like, I wanted to go somewhere, but then you you made a great point, and I'm like, yo, to be an R and B singer, but you say that as if like that's something different. But it's crazy because the world look at you guys as something different. Like R and B singers, like as like you guys are like light skinned with the. I mean, damn, you are like but I don't care. <laughs> shit. And I, but I'm I like stand with my the braids going back. Yeah. With the like, we we, we picture R and B. Yeah, we picture R and B singers as like like as genuine. Such. But it's like, bro, like R and B singers are just like, but nah, Chris, not even Chris Brown. Chris Brown got a little, he a little hood with him. He was a blood. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I don't know if he was. I think he still is. Yeah, you know, but I don't that, know. that's some shit you did not be. That's my you point. With the world, we look at Chris. We look at R and B singers like. Soft, but if you look at Chris Brown in the beginning and Trey Songz in the beginning, he was sixteen. Yeah, so that's what I'm saying. So people have those those stigmas behind it, but I don't care. I love it. I, you got you got you know what I'm saying. Some real rugged want. niggas out here. You know what I'm saying. Yeah, but that's the <laughs> thing. I just I didn't. Yeah, I don't. Know. I didn't. I don't know. I just stay on. My, I stay in my lane. You know, so I don't go out here trying to be tough. I just hold my weight. You know, so I'm in the gym. You know, what I'm saying my people around me keep the pistols on them. And you know, what I'm saying shit. We, I don't know. We just real niggas at the end of the day. Like, cause I'm from Detroit, so all that pretty boy shit that shit don't mean nothing. You know, so I've been fighting my whole life, even in college, dropping shit. So then it's like it is what it is. It's, it's so much ground to cover with you, bro. Cause it's so much to talk about. I think you, you're one of the people that's really grinding and like been doing it for a while. Yeah, but I still feel like me personally, just on, I'm the outside looking in. So I say it with all due respect. I feel like you ain't getting the respect that you deserve from like on a higher level. You know what I'm saying? Like from your peers, I think niggas respect you. Niggas that know you, yeah, of course respect you. But like on a higher level, as far as the industry, I think. Um, and I had a conversation about this yesterday. I think what happens is um, where we are in society, a lot of people, if they didn't get it the way you got it, or they're not hustling, like even. Say you got it easy, mm-hmm. but I'm working hard. You can't even respect my shit because it's like I can't even understand it's foreign. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, and that's and it, and it's not your fault, but that I run into that. A lot of these cats, they grind, but they ain't grind like me. Like mm-hmm. they people don't know what it's like to put your own money up in front of your own career because a lot of people ain't had to do it. Mm-hmm. They've been doing it at a level where yeah, I'm been able to make stuff shake and do shows and make and go on tours, but it's always been somebody there that kind of cradle you. I haven't never had that. I'm the nigga that got. Hundreds, hundreds of thousand dollars that I didn't create on my own, and I didn't pay for my way on a lot of shit, and and still, I'm the nigga that got the real nice jewelry and and the nice big ass houses and all the businesses and the nice cars. But I created myself. I mm-hmm. did this with no help from anybody. So some people they they just can't. They like they either they just too too fake, and oh, I'm just too raw for niggas. Mm-hmm. And, and and I see it sometimes when I'm dealing with some of these artists and. And, and seeing how they act when they're around me. And I don't hold it against them because I understand that you can't even figure out why you don't like me. Mm-hmm. Or you can't even figure out why you you don't show me no love. In your most vulnerable moments, though, right? Yeah. Um, when you at home by yourself, you know what I'm saying? When the camera's not on and shit like that. I ask people this all the time. How are you really feeling then? You know what I'm saying? Because it's easy when you out and you're like, man, nah, I'm good. Like, it's the insecurity within them. And it's, it's just them. And, like, you know, like, my time coming. But when you at home and you're during your darkest moments and your darkest days, how do you really feel in those moments? Are you like, how do how you take that? I don't know. I, I, I ain't gonna lie. Like, I, I don't really have, like, I'm such a high off life, lovey-dovey, like, great-spirited individual. Now, I ain't gonna lie. I've, I've never felt suicidal about shit in my life. I've never felt down to the point where I say, like, oh, I ain't gonna make it. Because making it is a perception, mm. all right? Success is a perception. Success for me could be different for you. Mm-hmm. In my opinion, I, I'm already successful. I have businesses that I I make a lot of money, residual, monthly, and annually, you know what I mean, that, hey, I don't got to do music ever. Just like in your shit, I make more money doing everything else than I do music. Mm. But where it goes coincide, it's the fact that the music and the popularity and the fan base creates the the um the clientele for other businesses for other that things. bring in revenue. Mm. I can post my music and say, hey, I just dropped a new song. Y'all go follow it, go go download it, go stream it. You know what I mean? And I'll get a nice little traction. But let me drop a picture of me closing on the house or me dropping a new car or me showing a check of a hundred thousand that I got from a bank because my credit is good. Now I got my DMs blown up. Mm. Can you show me how to do this? And guess what? Either way it goes, we I win regardless. Mm. Because what people do is they're gonna remember like, damn, that's Nick Lavelle. He helped me my credit. I think he helped me buy a house. 
and he got some good music and he be friends. Like it be so much stuff that, and, and I'm cool with that. Mm. At the end of the day, I always make this pat. Like even if I don't make it to that level on the music, I'm good because I know I'm gonna be a millionaire regardless. And I know I'm gonna be able to create more bosses. I'm gonna be able to create more opportunities for others because maybe sometimes your, your calling in life may not be for what you wanna do, but it may be something different. I may be here to change other lives. I may be the person that can separate or, or, or create the opportunity for the next big star because I didn't have nobody to go hard for me that I I know what it I know what it takes to go hard for somebody else and take them to the next level. My daughter is nine. She's talented. So I know for sure, all fails, I got a child for sure that I know I can make a, a star and that will change the generation to come for our family. So before we get to plan B's and like, I don't know, like, cause when you say things like that, I just hear of you accepting life, right? And if I'm if I'm wrong, correct me. But from what I saw, I saw Nick Lavelle doing the music first before all of this. Mm -hmm. Granted, you had to mature and you had to learn how to do real estate, how to get your credit right, how to do all these things that generate more money. But I saw the music first, and when I think of somebody that's doing music and still doing it for so long, I mean, what ten plus years? What we? Probably... I would say two thousand and uh, it's it ain't been ten years. It's it ain't been like, ten years. Probably, I'm probably pushing at seven okay. because that two thousand and fifteen. Is when I really got it popping. Okay. I always look when I graduated college. That's so when I started. Even even so even seven years. Even seven years. Somebody that been doing music for seven years, right? And you get into all these other things, and you see the success behind it, and you see how how good it's doing and is it flourishing. And you look at it and be like, but it's not. But your music ain't flourishing as good as that. And you just started that. Is no frustration whatsoever in it. Honestly, <sighs> it's, and if okay. it's not wet, what no, was the I got you. Point? I got you. I got you. It's it's. I wouldn't say because I didn't, I didn't had those moments years ago. Mm. Um, you got to get to a point in your life where you realize how this world works. You got family and friends that won't even support you more than a stranger. So right. when you once you got that, once you understand how that works, all this other shit don't even matter no more. Cause it's like, damn, I got family, I got girls, I didn't fuck the shit out. I'm like, damn, you mean tell me you can't repost my shit? <laughs> but I got this chick who in love with me from fucking uh, North Dakota. They ain't never seen me there in life. She reposting it. Once you start, once that happens. You, oh, I can't even feel bad about this no more. Mm -hmm. I can't, I can't. I, the days of, because I didn't I didn't shed real tears because I was like, damn, I had a show I told everybody to come to and it was free and y'all didn't come? That shit hurt. How did you get I, through I, that though? Man, just, it, once it keep happening, it's over. Like, yeah, it's, it's like, like, I'm used to it. Yeah, so you, you come numb to it. It's like, yeah. once you show me your ass, motherfucker, it's over. Oh, I ain't kissing that motherfucker. I'm out. Yeah, I, I get it. Done. I get it. And, and, and ultimately, that's what it came down to. I got to the point because if I was terrible, if I was an artist that just didn't make good music, then sometimes you can have that moment in that, that real conversation with yourself, like, damn, maybe I'm not good enough. But when you make music and you got you put it out and you got different people from different parts of the country, sometimes different parts of the world, streaming and posting different songs that you didn't put out at different times of your life, you know you're you this you know you meant for this shit. Yeah. You know you make quality music. You know you make good enough music. And when at you, that point I don't even need no validation. Yeah, I don't need validation that. because I know that I make the type of music that people are listening for, mm. looking for. Then to take it to a next level, when I'm able to go into venues in cities and states that I've never been in, you never heard of me and I'm able to move the crowd the way I do, guess what? I didn't prove to y'all that I can do this shit. All right, I know major artists with deals that's on major levels that can't even do what I do. They label can't even get them on these tours or mm -hmm. they won't even put them on these tours because it won't be a waste of money. Right. And I do it. So it's like, I'd be, I, like I said, I'd be numb to this. I'm having fun. I'm at a great place in my life and I'm only elevating because it's like I'm watching everybody around me lives change. Getting that's my fine. girl a crib, that was a, big, that was a big moment for me. You know what I mean? Because I seen where she was at and... You know, like I said, it, it's a, it's a dom it's a domino effect. You know, doing the music and getting to them new levels and being praised and um, having the opportunity to showcase your talent, it just leads to more opportunities for other things to do. And I think that's what artists lack at though, because where another artist can have a big record, right, and all they thinking about is music. You know, what I mean, and some of them may do stuff and they don't show it or they don't talk about it. But um, when you a major artist and you got that platform. It's so much stuff you can do without music. I don't, you don't even need to talk about, oh, my label ain't letting me release no music. Fuck it. <laughs> Who cares? Because now at this point, I got the fan base. I'm about to do some other shit. Or I'm at least do some other shit till they get off, till they get out of that 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 little mold they on. 
I'm gonna do other shit that's gonna bring me income and keep the bag rolling. But it's easy to say, but I feel like when you're in love with something, you love something wholeheartedly and genuinely, and somebody won't let you do something that you love, that hurts, no? Mm -hmm. Give or take, because they, why they not let you do it, you know? And this, and I had these conversations about deals and artists signing deals. Artists sign deals when they're fucked up or when they're vulnerable. Mm. So instead of just having somebody look at the contract, <laughs> and get, and making sure that the person that's looking at the contract is somebody that's not connected to the goddamn motherfuckers that you dealing with. It don't make sense. It don't make sense. You feel me? Because I hear about that all the time. You got the go. label lawyer looking at your contract. Yeah. That makes no sense. Retarded. <laughs> but it's all good. It's all good. You know what I'm saying? Because you live and you learn. And, and I, I see a lot of artists is trying to. But when you got these kids coming from, from these areas in these these um inner cities where they don't got anything Nothing. you can't tell them shit. it's kind of hard because they already mentally aren't grasping the the concept of how life works and business and contracts a lot of them not even finishing school so they don't know the knowledge about it so how you mean tell me oh i gotta go find a label i mean i gotta find a lawyer to look at this Nigga. and the fact that they gotta know the difference between an entertainment lawyer and a regular lawyer it's tough man Facts. so they be putting them, them they never situation they really never gave us a fair shot for real. i want to say something i want to get your, your thoughts behind it all this shit is, is random this is <laughs> dope as shit that i'm having this conversation with <laughs> um i think drake once said this right and i want to get your opinion it Cush roll glass full. I prefer the better things. Niggas with no money act like money isn't everything. What I you think about that? Good time. They seem trying to ruin it. Uh, yeah, that's the that's that's the statement right there. Yeah, that statement. How he would say niggas time. with no money act like money isn't everything. Yeah, I mean, I love I love playing both sides or at least giving perspectives. Yeah, I think if you never had money, how could it be anything to you? How could it mean something if you never had it? Because mm. you you don't know what it's like to have money. So at the end of the day, it's like, why do this? Why I never had it? So why does it why does it hold that much value? I've been making it through life the way I've been making it through, and I've been having a good time. You know, I may struggle from time to time, but that's my struggle. That's my story. So why is money held to a higher pedestal? You know what I mean, of course, money can change lives. You know what I'm saying? Because if you give somebody some money that never had it, mm. don't y'all see the reaction? Do y'all see the stuff that people do when they never had something? You know what I mean? So that's the one side I look at it. Now, if you have money and you and you've grown to accustom this type of lifestyle, mm -hmm. now mm -hmm. you have to maintain it. Now money is everything because you have to keep up with what you got going on because you already became accustomed to what this feels like. And if you don't keep this going, you don't know what it's like not to have money. So I look at, you know, I try to bring both perspectives. Man, um, <laughs> you know, I, I used to be one of them guys that said like money wasn't nothing. You know what I'm saying? It ain't, it ain't about the money. And then I got some money and I'm like, damn, it's not enough. And I remember, I, I, I never forget, like, um, you know, we had those, you, you hit it, girls, these the podcast, talk about six figures and shit like that. Yeah. And I never forget, like, I got my first job, it was like six figures. And it, it was, I appreciated it, but I understood that at that moment, it's like, this ain't shit. What the fuck is this? But it's like, this is so much more than what I had before. Yeah. But it's like, I understood what niggas was saying, and now I listen to these words, I, li I listen to these lyrics differently when a nigga say, niggas with no money act like money isn't everything. It is. Like, I went to the dentist the other day, right? And I and I was just, uh, just I was just telling my girl, like, yo, we really, as African American culture, we really never had a fair shot. You know what I'm saying? Because- And we still behind too. Bro, if your parents, <laughs> right? Like, hypothetically, right? If, if your parents is doing all they could do to, to help you survive, like, to, to, to survive, the little things that's so super important, like taking you to the doctor every six months, right? They they can't even do it because they don't have the insurance, right? right? Or they can't even pay the, the the premiums and things like that. And I'm like, yo, the fact that I can go somewhere and I can take care of my medical bills, I can pay for the food that I need to take care so I can take care of myself, that all costs money. So even before we get to the shiny, the, the, the diamonds, before we get to the cars, before we get to the clothes, money is literally how the world go around. And they say money is the root of all evil. No, it ain't money. It's the people with it. You yeah. know what I'm saying? That's why when I think the of the type money, type of people with it. Exactly. And I think of the money, I'm like, bro, it ain't. You can't sit up here and tell me money don't mean nothing. You can't sit up here and tell me money don't yeah. mean nothing because it could change your fucking life. I said, if you give money to a sad person, I promise you, 99 percent gonna smile. You feel me? I mean, that's just my take. If your you credit get... was messed up. You got you got your credit together. How? Um, <clears throat> strategic disputing, but it <laughs> I'm costs pretty sure money. You had to invest in some. It some costs money. No matter how I cut it, but I say that all the time too. I say, I say, listen, 
you got to change your life, it, it start with a couple dollars here and there. And they don't got to be, you ain't got to have a couple thousand just to get shit done, but you can start with little stuff. And I always tell even clients that I bring in on the programs, I'll be like, look, this is how much you charge. <clears throat> we'll do a two payment plan. We'll do one portion up front where you get the other half. We'll get the, you know, get the starting. But it's we, we break it down to make it easier on people. But it's still like, it's some money got to be, got to be paid in some way, shape, or form. Unless you got good credit. Yeah, if you got good credit, but, but if, good if credit, you got good credit, credit you some, get some money. <laughs> yeah, if you to have good credit, you had to have made some some very rational decisions. You know what I'm saying? Financial sacrifices. Yeah, you got facts. to. Like I just got my shit up and it's lit right now. Like I ain't even. And that's what I <laughs> that's what I preach to people. I say, man, y'all don't know what it feels like to have good credit and apply for something and it's approved like that. that. Yeah, you ain't got to do no documents. They go, what? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You look yeah. at the, the pre-approval thing like, oh, I'm glad. <laughs> oh, yeah. Once you get the pre-approval, oh, yeah, it's over. It's, it's I love over, pre- yeah, pre-approval. is the best feeling. Yo, do you think you will ever see yourself getting signed at all? Yeah, for sure. I mean, I already got situations on the floor now. It's really now it comes down to me. Well, well, what I mean? would this deal look like? Like, I don't even understand. Why would you get signed? Because, because this thing, with music, you want the push. Mm. You only gonna go so far independent, and even independent is not what you think. People think everybody say, "Oh, they're independent." No, independent is what I'm doing. Independent is putting your own money up and then figuring out just solely on your fan base, spending money on marketing and advertising and doing ads on social media and paying blogs to talk about you. That's independent, all right. With me just uploading my music on a random distro kid or TuneCore or CD Baby and stuff like or United Masters. That's independent. You getting distribution through a major label or a label that has a major label as a parent company, that's not solely independent because you have help. Mm. Independent is no help and just literally paying your way for stuff or just it being solely off of your fan base, organic, right. straight, like, like just, like I said, genuine shit. So you want that um, major label push because there's no major artist that's not signed to a label. You Even I mean? Drake signed to a fucking label. Hell yeah, he signed to one of the worst deals ever. But that's the reality. People don't know. They see the everybody, Lil Baby, the biggest rappers in the world are signed to terrible deals. Mm. Right now, they're probably in a more favorable deal now because they didn't prove their their value. And it's not a shot at them. It's yeah. just it's just the reality of the industry. And the thing is, this is where I talk about if I'm a Drake. Drake, his life is different because now everything, he, he, he can go anywhere and probably get everything for free. Got clothes, people want to make clothes with him, everyone do sponsorships, partnerships. So he's getting money off all that. And you know, he probably don't have to do music, but and you, now you see as the bigger they become, the less music they drop, you know? Cause now it's almost like, all right, now I just need to just pace myself. All right, if I'm future, I could drop an album once a year. You know, and that's cool. Back then, Future used to drop four, five mixtapes, left and right. Drake used to drop mixtape by the mixtape. Wayne, same thing. Because they had to. They had to. Yeah. Now they're at a point now where they could just, all right, we could do, you know, we it's could crazy, bro. Ourselves. I have people come on this show, man. I'm always, everybody be like, yo, you can't be so uh, so biased. Like, you got to be in the middle and like, bro, it's my show. I say what the fuck I want. And so yeah, what, keep it and what, what, when I, I'm against getting signed, not all the way, like probably 60, 40. But I feel like a nigga like you, bro, you getting these pool parties. Your pool parties lit on your own. Mm-hmm. You got a celebrity basketball game. You got the fucking credits you doing. You got so many things that you doing. You doing these tours on your own. And I'm like, I'm if you get on, my own on your real. own. And I see it. And I'm like, yo, you get signed. Like, they just going to put the money up. The money that you already been putting up, you going to have to pay them back, right? So, this is the reality. This, and I'm gonna like tell you credit why. card. It's just like fucking <laughs> credit. Why spend your money spend somebody else's? It I don't just, make I, sense. As soon as I said it, it, it hit me. Like, <laughs> yeah, I'm, I'm the wrong nigga to say that to. That's what I'm saying. I'm, I'm looking for the nice bag because Fact, it's, it's the card. same yeah. thing. Let me Facts. tell you. Facts. The biggest billionaires. Y'all, all right, so everybody seeing this shit with Elon Musk, right? Yeah. He bought Twitter. Do y'all know how he bought Twitter? I do. All right. Talk he broke it down in four ways. You got all right? some more drinks? Come on, talk to me. Yeah. So Give he got that. investors that gave him $16 billion, mm-hmm. All right. Pull then he had, he had, oh, my bad, my bad. Yeah, you say the same shit. I said it to the chicks. Yeah. Hey, put your own damn danger. Yeah, because if you, you know what I'm saying? Like, I want no you. issues. God damn it. <laughs> that's what but, um, I was just looking at it on Twitter. So he, 16, 16 billion was from investors. Another, uh, 16 billion was from stocks. It wasn't Ooh. liquid cash. And then the other, I think the other like 10, 15 billion left, because he bought it for like 46 billion, was probably some some cash that he had or some type of stuff. But the number one thing I, I thought about was 
he did bring in investors, 16 mm -hmm. billion. That's a billionaire. He's one or two richest yeah. people in the world. Why my own money? Why he ain't spend his own money? I'm Why? not about to do that. Exactly. So same concept for the label. Mm. Go ahead. Because the only thing you're getting is, even if you give me a 360, you're giving me the push. You're giving me the money up front. You're giving me the budget, the marketing dollars to push my singles and my, my albums and make me a big ass star. Um, it, it falls on you as a person. I'm a marketable individual. I'm personable. I'm already doing the small things that people can attest to. I'm, I'm taking the pictures. I'm pulling up on people. I'm going to the the uh, food banks in certain cities when I touch down. I'm involved. I'm in my fraternity. I'm heavily involved in my fraternity. Um, I help people with a lot of things. I help change lives. So now you give me the bigger scale, the bigger platform. Mm. I'm going to make way more money than what the fuck the label's going to give me anyway, but all I need is the push. I just okay. need you to give me the, the, the platform because that's ultimately what I need. Every time I step in the store, I mean, in a show, in, in a venue, and I perform in front of people who don't know me and I gain fans, that's the same shit. I'm going to gain money from it. Yeah, it's, it's over. So you, you, you would be pro 360. Yeah, I don't care because the 360, the thing is, I already got money. I already make money. Mm -hmm. So it's not like I don't give a fuck about paying you back. It's the same thing I would do with a bank loan. It's the same exact thing. I don't care. You could get, because how do you, how do this make sense anyway when I look at situations? If I'm the artist with the talent, but I have no money, you say I got the connects and the money, I'm going to give it to you and I'm going to make you big. I just want a piece of everything. Why is that a problem? Mm. I always ask people this, like, oh, you signed to a 360 deal, but. What like what's the issue with it? Cause so, what, what are you? If you didn't have no fucking money anyway, and I didn't made you a high ass a, a pop star, and all I'm asking for is I need to make my I gotta make my money back. Yeah, it I makes gave sense. you the money. Yeah, I gotta get sense. my money back. Is that fair? And I don't want. But they be putting a little extra on top. But so. that's how. Well, why why would I give you money just to get what I got yeah, back? Interesting. That's dumb. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Like I could just kept my money. I didn't have to deal with none of that. So I'm gonna give you money even if I won't double back. Fuck it. I want double the money I put up. I made money off you. It is what it is. So why do niggas go wrong? Because we see, like, it, this ain't nothing it, new. Why we see oh, all these you know artists? Why go wrong? Because every they don't have the fucking business sense. They don't have the the mindset. These are hood niggas that's coming from nothing. They don't have anything. They don't have nobody coaching them about credit. If I get an advance for let's say a, a, I sign a deal for a million, mm -hmm. and advance is like a quarter million. Mm -hmm. All right. I'm going to take the whole quarter million and I'm going to invest it. That's it. Mm. All right? I'm going to invest the whole quarter million. And that's just what it is. I'm going to I'm gonna try to figure out what is their repayment? What is your repayment structure? What is the repayment amount that? Like, what do you need back to get me out of my deal? Because that's the thing I need to know. I need to know what, how much it costs to get out the deal and how much are you looking to get by the end of the deal? You know what I mean? That's just the numbers that you got to look at. You give me a million, you probably want three million back. You feel me? So how the fuck do I turn a million to three million? That's all I'm thinking. Outside of music. You know, and you only giving me a quarter million to a half of me up front to work with as far as like advance. So how do I use this money to make more money outside of music? Because you can flop. That is a legitimate thing. Like it might not be your season. You'll drop the same time Drake and Lil Baby drop. Now you can overshadow, but you probably put out some quality shit, but it's not getting. So you got to be strategic about that. So it's like a lot of cats go wrong because they get this money. They go buy their mama a house. I understand, you know, mama need a crib. Do mama need a crib right now? Mm. Do she really need a crib right now? Because right now, I ain't gonna lie, like, you gotta think about yourself. This music industry is a dangerous game. You gotta be selfish in that beginning. It's just like sports, that first contract. What you doing? You can't buy everybody a crib and everybody a car. You have to, you gotta, you gotta get you, <laughs> you gotta get in the green first. You in the red. How you buying people shit in the red? Mm. So I think that's where a lot of artists go wrong at because they, they get the money, they go buy a chain, and they spend 60 and 70, 80,000 on a chain and a watch, and then they, they buy all these clothes and they want to fly private jets. Sir, you are not him yet, and it's okay. <laughs> get to him and then do it. <laughs> Fuck. It, right. And I see it all the time. I mm -hmm. look at um, Fetty Wap. People don't remember, Fetty Wap sold his song for 80000 mm -hmm. to Lira mm -hmm. Cohen. You feel me? So his biggest record mm. for 80 bands, like what the fuck? But he was fucked up. Probably didn't have no money like that. It probably made a hundred. And I ain't talking about a hundred thousand. Okay, okay. I thought, yeah, all right. All right. <laughs> it probably that made a Fetty Wap run was insane. Probably one of the craziest ones of our time. Yeah, and he's from like, y'all, he's from the East he's Coast. He's from Jersey, yeah, he's I from think, Jersey. something like that. Patterson. So, Damn. 
And he had mm, mm, six, mm. seven records that was some top ten back shit. Back to back to back. Back to oh. back. I said, oh, hell no. You you tripped. I would have spaced them bitches out. There's no <laughs> way Fetty Wap should I be in a position that. he's. Oh, that hurt. And, and, that's why I'd be like, damn. And, and I feel, sometimes you feel bad. You know what I mean? Feel like, but he didn't have, he, he obviously didn't have the right uh, financial advisor around. Uh, and then he probably didn't have no nobody around to really, really like just help structure stuff because. You know, he he was he was talent. He still is talented. You know, what I'm saying I still listen to his music to this day. You know, and it's just now nah, I wish I could. It's see unfortunate. <laughs> it's unfortunate for the situations that people uh, are put in. But you know, you can't blame nobody but yourself. Cause not knowing something is one thing, but the ability to seek knowledge and not doing that, I can't hold. It. That's yeah. on you. Yeah. That's on you. Everybody got the the uh, the ability to go find exactly. It out. We got the ability to go on YouTube. Yeah, got YouTube University is a motherfucker. Exactly. Yo, question. Um, before we get out of here, we, I'm, I'm gonna talk about your music. But um, one thing that I noticed that's uh, different about you than it is with me, and a lot of people I even know, you were able to like use your fraternity in in, in, a, in a good way to help uh, progress in your career. Mm -hmm. I, I'm under, I'm trying to figure out like how did you get it? Cause even now I just be like, I'm in a fraternity is okay, but like if I see somebody in a fraternity, we're in a fraternity. But if not, but I feel like you was able to master that. And I'm still working on it. I, I like we we literally I just posted it uh, on my Facebook probably like cause my fraternity is very active on Facebook. Like we have the Facebook group chat and stuff like that. So for years, even when I was like even after I crossed early on in my career. I was using my fraternity to do events because when IOTAs would do events in different cities and different states, I will reach out to them and I will communicate with some of the brothers over in that, in that, in that chapter and I'll say, what y'all got coming up? Can I come perform? And I'll pay for my own way. I'll come out there and just just put me on the flyer, make me make it look good, make me perform in y'all little situation. And I kept doing it. And when other frats see it, it's like, I'm a popular individual in my fraternity. I'm already a popular individual in general, but then now you attach me to IOTA, it makes, you know, and it's just anything. It creates a better vibe, you know mm -hmm. what I'm saying? It's going to come with the good and the bad. Some people look at me, but like, oh, I don't fuck with him, and then that may be a knock on IOTA. Then when people do fuck with me, then it's like, oh, that's a plus for IOTA. Oh, he's an IOTA? I didn't know that. But now, you know, some young kid, a freshman in college, may be a fan of my music, but he, and now he's he like, want to be IOTA. You know, mm -hmm. it, it works like that. And a lot of frats, um, a lot of my bros seen that, and they seen an opportunity for even for their chapter to bring like more awareness to their chapter. Um, it made the it made the event look good because they like, damn, our bro came here and turned his bitch up, and now everybody like, damn, who was that? And they, oh, the IOTA threw a lit ass event. So domino effect. And then once you understand, like I before I even did music, I did events and shit in college. So what I did was I ended up doing, um, I, I figured out how to get money out of the universities. And I took that same concept to other universities across the, the country. Mm -hmm. And they just didn't know. And I showed my brothers how to get money to pay for me without them paying out their pocket. I say, look, y'all pay for me to come to y'all university. This is how you do it. This is who you contact. Once they did that, I gave them a kickback off every booking. So now they're making money. They got a lit event, and it's just a relationship builder. And then I just kept being at different events all over the country. And you know, I you. feel like that's something that a lot of us need to um, take advantage of. You know what I'm saying? Especially when we in these organizations and um, corporations, because I feel like I don't know if you're gonna do it, then do it 100. percent Yeah, why stop now? I I feel like um, in the D9, we sometimes look at IOTA as like the laughing stock. Mm -hmm. What made you choose that route? Like, what made you go IOTA route? Um, wanted to be different. Mm. When I went to college, I was um, interested in Kappa. Mm. Um, I was fucking with the Kappas. Um, I was for sure. I, was, I, I knew. I was like, I'm going to be a new. Because that's just, my cousin was that. He had just crossed as a freshman. And he had came um, to my, like, my senior year in high school. He was just around me. I was under him. And he was just kind of, like, grooming me to be a new. But I continued to get into it with the chapter at my university with some of the members and I just couldn't see myself join the organization after realizing like that. We don't even get along. Yeah, it's like how am I gonna be, you know, how you supposed to be my bro? And I didn't understand, I was 18, 19 at the time. So I'm not understanding discipline, I'm not understanding, I was a cocky ass nigga. So nobody could tell me anything. So you got that on top of nigga, 
how I'm, I'm fucking the same bitch as you fucking. So mm -hmm. I fuck, like, nigga, I ain't about the hell no. Nah. That's how my mindset was at that time. At 18, I'm 31 now. So looking back at it, it's like I made the right choice because I felt that I did what I need to do to change something. My chapter has won every step show in the last four years. Stroll loss. They won chapter of the year in our fraternity, in the whole fraternity. We went chapter the year. Like, just shit like that. I was like, damn, I never, like, I like you have a vision for something, but you don't know how big that vision going to become until you look back 10 years from now. And mm -hmm. I'm almost 10 years into my fraternity. Same. You know I'm saying? almost 10 years, too. You was, I was 13. Or 13? 13. Yeah, yeah. yeah I'm fall 12. Fall, fall 13. So oh, I'm right. almost 10 years. Yeah, yeah, yeah I'll yeah. be 10 this November. That's what's up, man. But yeah, dude, that shit is Congrats. crazy, though. Yeah, appreciate it because it's like, uh, yeah. Like, it's crazy because, like, you know, um, when I was young, uh, and who who who, who would have thought we've been talking about fraternity shit on here? I never talk fraternity shit here, ever. But um, I always try to talk fraternity. I, I'm always finding a way I never to bring talk it in. fraternity shit. But since we here, why. like you, I, like, and, and I know when you say I used to be out as fuck. Yeah, but you can't. It's because I'm a Gemini, bro. Like, when your birthday? June the fifth. Oh, wow. It's sweet. like when I was out, I was super out. Yeah, like, I remember super. Yeah, you but you always been lit. Though. But now it's like you can't even get me to talk about Q. Like. Omega Man, Sci Fi. Y also, I, I love y'all fraternity too, because it's like, you know, that would have been um, if I didn't, if you know what I'm saying, if I didn't join my fraternity, it was always going to be between Kappa and Q. But I, I, I wanted to commend you because I think it's dope. When I, now being older, right, and anytime I think of Iota's, like, and this is like probably five years after I crossed, I was like, yo, for people to join this fraternity knowing that we make fun of it, I respect them. No. That's how I always look at it because yeah. I mean I feel like I mean, it's it's not it's, it's nothing to hide or, or be ashamed of. I feel like the fraternities kind of do make yeah. fun of. When you I, I don't know about it, now. I'm not yeah. in school. Still, it's always gonna be that yeah. way. You know, the, when you realize this, it all goes back to that same scenario with earlier. When you're always when this has always been the narrative, who gives a fuck? Because mm. it's like when you think about it, it's like it's almost the same shit as you making fun of a fat person, mm. like. What, what are you mad at me for? Why are you making fun of my fraternity because we was the last? It's not like I didn't know like that that's what they was going to do, but I joined this fraternity because it, it fit what I was looking to do on my campus and what I had envisioned for the future. You What, what are you mad for? And I, I mean, tell kids, why, why, you know, why are you talking bro, about us? It don't matter. Go, it, uh, damn, I love this conversation. When I, when I go tell, <laughs> when I go talk to, to kids at universities now, it's like, you know, I feel bad. I feel like I'm slighting my fraternity a little bit because I, I don't tell kids to, I don't tell uh, kids in college to pledge Omega or, or, or be a Omega sci-fi. You know I'm saying? I don't tell them that. I say, make sure you choose something that fits with you that you want to do. Right. And if it's nothing that you want to do, you can create your own because we've seen it. Yep. You know what I'm saying? Like we have organizations on campus now that are not a part of the D9 and it's flourishing. And if you don't, if you if you don't see anything that's on campus that reflects what you want to be, you don't have to become anything. You could create your own thing and it could be just fine. And people might make fun of you, but that's who that's what you stand on. And yeah. that makes you more respectable and commendable as a person. Mm -hmm. I mean, that's just what I think. But whatever, we we off that. Um what you got going on, man? What's the music like? Talk, talk to me about the music. Like, what, man, uh, just working on a lot of records. Um, getting ready to drop a project called Toxic. Mm. I just got to get this. I got to get it out. I've been working on it for like a year and a half. And um, the music on there is just, it's toxic, but it's fun. And it, it kind of gives people more insight of my life. Because I think I'm, I'm I'm definitely talking about stuff that I experienced, you know, just in a, you know, a, a metaphorical way. Mm -hmm. But um, I'm, I'm just like, like I said, I'm at that point in my life where, I just want shit to flow, you know. I mean, cruise control, but I'm still applying pressure if that makes sense. Um, and, and just ultimately, you know, I'm just trying to elevate every Bro, day. You've been working since I know you. Like you, I look at you and I will be thinking about me because like <laughs> niggas ain't really working like me, but I be looking at you like. This nigga. <laughs> Every year, man. Yo, you been Elevation. working, bro. Got to, because it's like, shit. It's like, I want I want a certain lifestyle. I want to live a certain life, and I want to live it forever, and I want my children to live it. I see when I go to my, my kid's school, and I pick them up in the, in the C8, and I've got the Lamborghini dolls on, and then the teachers and everybody, they're like, what the, the fuck was yeah. That's nigga, I came man. outside like the fuck. Yeah, yeah. I, I wasn't see. even expecting that shit. I know what like, I see. I'm right here, like, oh shit. I was wrong. I said, this nigga funny as hell. But this is, hey, this is how I be. But look, Thanks. it's all about, you know, positioning and, and being um, in the right position to do the things that you want to do to create the generational wealth and shit like that. That's why I had an interview where I was talking more about my businesses, and the girl was like, we don't give a fuck. We want to hear about the music. 
And I was like, you know, I ain't gonna hold that against you. You know what I mean? Because, you know, you don't you don't understand. You don't know that you don't you don't know better. Mm. That because, in order for me to still do this music, I have to have these businesses because they help fund the career for the music. For sure, that's just the reality. For sure. You know I mean? So when you say, uh, how do you? If it's something that you love, it's not that I'm giving up. I'm never giving up. I'm still doing it. But it's like this. This, this, this shit ain't paying me. This that's why I got my job. <laughs> you feel me? And I, I can't work for anyone. That's just not me. I yeah. can't do it, or I prefer not to. I can't I say I can't do it, but I, I prefer not to. Trust me, I understand. You know what I, mean? and it's just, I understand. Yeah, so I'm cool. It's a sacrifice with, there. Yeah, and it's not wrong with that. Don't yeah. you ever feel discouraged about oh, what you got know. going on. Hey, man. They pay me they, a couple they, dollars, so. Yeah, fuck it. <laughs> yeah, I got good ass benefits. <laughs> I'm paying out of pocket for my benefits, but fuck it, it is what it is. Yo, how can they get support you on everything that you got going on? Man. Say it one more time. How can people support you on everything you got going on? Um, just, you know, I tell people this. If you already subscribe to Apple, if you already got a Spotify account or YouTube account, just follow, subscribe to the channels and and, and download the music. You already paying for it monthly. Mm. So it's like shit, it, it ain't it ain't gonna cost you extra to support me. What's the name of the channels? Oh yeah, you know, it's Nick Lavelle one on all social media uh digital platforms. Um the music, you know, you see Nick Lavelle type me on Google or whatever, you're gonna pull up everything, you know. And just be on the lookout for a lot of stuff that I got going on. Cause a lot of stuff I do, I do a lot of free events. You know, my celebrity basketball game is free. I give away uh, two hundred free tickets for my pool party. So I'm always finding ways to still tap in with the people and make it uh, a little suitable for them. I got a pop up shop, Bad Bitch Mixer, that I got going on. That's for a bunch of uh, female businesses, stuff like that. And that's, you know, you crazy. You got a girlfriend, right? A bunch of them. I'm about to say, I don't so know no, how no, no. You... I got me a shorty. I got me. I don't a know how the hell you like. How the hell you do this? Like, cause I was just talking to my cameraman about this uh, ozone. I'm like, bro. This well, nigga, also, 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 he always on the I'm like, this nigga Nick be having girls after girls. I'm like, I don't know how this nigga so do it. So it's really like, it's, so what you see is, once again, perception. You know, perception is key. Well, you make that shit so, work. Yeah, <laughs> and the thing is, my girl like girls. So that's okay. that's number one. Number okay. two, even beyond that, you know, because so, I don't ever want to disrespect her. Because I've, I've disrespected my girl unintentionally by certain stuff that I've said or done on social media and she don't deserve that. So at the end of the day, you know, I always make sure I, I'm very respectful of her and she she holds it down because of the simple fact that she sees where I'm going. She knows what I got going on. She's not an insecure individual. And I tell any chick deal with me, you gotta have like tough skin. You gotta be willing to go through um, certain shit and I'm never gonna make it to where you don't understand it. You know, so like I said, I just bought my girl a house. You know what I mean? And shit, all the niggas she fuck with ain't did. God damn it. I mean, yeah. that's, I mean yeah. that's different. Yeah. That's you a feel different. me? So, <laughs> like, yeah, God damn it. So, I mean, the shit that I'm doing is benefiting kind of, you. So, yeah. like, I mean, give me some slack. Yeah, I ain't yeah, going to disrespect you, babe, but just give me some slack. Yeah, and, and hopefully, you know what I'm saying? <laughs> and she has. You know in what the mean? most respectful way. In the most respectful way, she <laughs> has. And, and I'm very fortunate to have her in my corner. You know what I mean? All right, yo, I appreciate you, though. We got to do another one of these because there's so much shit that we ain't even unpacked that we can unpack. Yeah. I appreciate you pulling up. Uh, Nick Lavelle, everybody. Um, great oh, yeah. conversation. Great dude. Um, is there anything else you got to say? Man, uh, phew. No, nah, not really, man. It's just a vibe. You know what I'm saying? I'm just, you know, fortunate to even be in these positions to do these things. You know what I mean? I don't take none of this shit for granted. You know I man? appreciate you, dog. Hell yeah, I appreciate you. Nick man. Lavelle, everybody. It's a wrap. We out. It's on the flow.